Um, so far, the statewide operation operations strong, targeting domestic and family violence, offended from the past fortnight. Um, we're committed to protecting the community from this shameful and devastating crime. We targeted 373 offenders and attended nearly 400 addresses across the entire state. As a result, 194 offences were detected and 87 people were arrested with 16 people reported. We conducted 58 dog compliance checks and 22 warrants were executed and 124 occurrences were cleared. 10 firearms prohibition order compliance searches were completed and we should five stalking cautions and 26 intervention orders to serve. If I can just highlight the kind of offences that we're talking about and the serious nature of them, they include a breach of bail and breach of intervention orders. Now these orders are designed to protect women and are supposed to um, be complied with and when you have people who are not complying with the orders, it's a, a serious infringement on people's safety and it's also indicating the court, to the court what they think of those orders. There was also various assaults from simple assault assault caused harm and aggravated assault, property damage, and then we moved to threats of unlawful violence, hindered police, unlawful imprisonment, stalking, strangulation, theft, aggravated serious criminal trespass, and police also executed a warrants for a range of offences, and all those warrants were associated in some way or another with a breach of domestic violence order. We um, made 35, 100, 135 support referrals to those offenders in an effort to um, divert them to uh, perpetrator programs. And of those, 85 people accessed um, a SAFOR website to seek assistance with their behaviour. If I can just highlight a couple of examples um, to show the impact of this kind of effect on, on victims. In one case, a 39 year old man from um, Adelaide Plains was arrested after he allegedly assaulted his partner and he set two cars on fire. Um, the damage to the, the cars was about $100,000 and of course the impact on the victim can never be quantified in those terms. Polio and dog operations were called in to locate the suspect and he was subsequently arrested for assault caused harm, acts to endanger life, choke, suffocate or strangle a person in a domestic setting, arson and drug traffic offences. And he's on bail with conditions now to protect the victim and they will be strictly monitored. Following other inquiries from Ops Storm, our target presented um, himself at the Riverland Police Station on the 24th of October. The 25-year-old was arrested for assault on his domestic partner and a police intervention order was issued and the victim has been referred to domestic violence service support. In a third example, a 60-year-old Eastern Suburbs woman was arrested for the attempted murder of her domestic partner and the victim was allegedly stabbed in the neck and the arms and was taken to the hospital. Once again, the police intervention order was issued and the woman, is, the woman is now before the courts. In all cases, support services are being provided to each of those victims. So as you can see, um, the impact of these offences on victims and their family is quite um, impactful in terms of um, the effect it has on them feeling safe in our community. And what we are doing is to try and make them feel safe and provide the right support services and put these offenders before the courts. Now, you might ask how these offenders are targeted under this operation, and they're particularly targeted using an, an intelligence and risk indicator approach. The kinds of things that we look at is um, look at people who have a history of domestic violence, yeah, they have a history of breaching the orders, ignoring the orders, if you like. Um, there might be history of stalking, both physical and online. Uh, we look at people who have a firearms licence or a firearms weapons prohibition order and we look at obviously recent, recent offending. So all the people we target in Storm have come to our attention before so we know that they are in a high risk category. Um, and further the operation in totality um, involved um, the dedicated effort of about 400 police officers across the state in the various districts and LSAs. So throughout this operation, what we're able to do on these, these periods is ask the districts and the LSAs to marshal their resources on specific days um, using the intelligence approach to target these offenders to provide reassurance to the victims, but also send a really strong message to these alleged offenders that uh, we can be there any time. Uh, we are vigilant in our approach. Whilst domestic violence response is a daily um, business as usual for us, sadly, um, we're not being able to pick our resources um, at critical times when it's unexpected, um, I think is a strong message to offenders and perpetrators out there in the community. What, sorry? 
What do you mean? Um, what do you make of this 25% arrest rate from the number of targets? Is that higher than you were expecting? Um, well, given that we were taking a targeted intelligence risk-based approach, um, it gives us reassurance that we're using the right risk factors um, and that we're targeting the right people to get the best results and those who are most um, at risk of the offending or breaching conditions. How many individuals are actually charged? Because it says they're char uh, people are charged for 194 offences, but how many of the um, 87 that were arrested were actually charged? So all of the 87 that were arrested would be charged with something, whether it's multiple offences. Likewise, the 16 people were reported. Um, there could be a single offence or there might be multiple. So that's why a combination of those figures is how we get to 194. Were any of them repeat arrests from the first 12? Um, I'm not sure about that, but we can have a look and see if they're aware of that. I haven't got that data. Does that indicate that there's a uh, possibility of a, a, a further um, high burst of activity, that there might be more offenders out there who need to be picked up and sweep like this? Uh, what we, well, we're going to conduct these operations every quarter. The, the timing will vary, so that's part of that surprise element. There's a, a window of opportunity where they, they're conducted. Um, but um, all, obviously business as usual, if there's any other high-risk offenders, resources are put, put to them. It just gives, it gives us an opportunity to increase those resources at a particular time. And with the arrests and the support services that were offered for some of the targets, are they mutually exclusive or were some of the support services offered to people who are actually wound up being charged? Uh, if, I mean. Everyone was offered support services regardless of whether they were charged or not. So that was a, a mandatory um, request of the officers and that was complied with. And compared to data from the last quarter, have you seen um, <coughs> excuse me, the success that you'd like to see during this latest reporting period? Um, yes, if you measure success, which is a sad thing to do in terms of the outputs, um, because it's how it's supposed to continue, we actually had greater results in terms of the um, number of premises attended, uh, the offenders targeted, and the number of offences. So the effort was just as high, sadly, the outputs are just as sustained. How helpful would it be if they are uh, fitted with electronic monitoring devices? In some of these cases, it would be really helpful because you've got that real-time information regarding where they are and what they're doing so that you can um, um, interdict much earlier to know what, know what they're doing and to, you know, the fact that it may change behaviour because people know they're actively being monitored 24-7 and can have that. All of these things may work um, on some centres at certain times. Would you expect the arrest rate to go up? Depending on whether it has a deterrent effect or people totally ignore it, it's hard to tell which way it would go, so it could go either. In some cases, it probably go one way, and in other cases, the other way. Is this too many? Is this too many people? Everyone is too many. Um, we're deeply concerned about the amount of family and domestic violence within our community. Um, we're also welcoming the Commission, looking for uh, new and better ways of approaching this, particularly in the prevention space. Um, police tend to come in when things have escalated and people are already being harmed. Um, we would like to see that it didn't get to that stage where we had to be involved because we'd like people to feel safe in our community. So I think the Royal Commission underscores that um, from a community's perspective, we all agree that there is too much and that any domestic or family violence is too much and women and children in particular should be kept safe in our community. What's the breakdown of the, the genders? I, I see that there's at least one woman arrested. Um, I, can't, I don't have it at hand, I'm sure you can provide it, but I suspect the numbers would have been majority of male and that was probably just um, an unusual case, but um, when I say unusual, not unheard of. Do you think that within the community that the confidence to come forward and actually report these crimes is growing? I think it is and I think the community's tolerance for what they see and what they accept is changing. Um, there's certainly more open conversations. We know um, it's discussed in school programs. Um, it's discussed more in workplaces um, in terms of um, acceptable, not acceptable behaviours. And I think all of that adds to people's confidence in coming forward and um, people drawing the line about what they think is appropriate behaviours or not. And I think it also does underscore there's a confidence to come to police because um, action can be taken. Sadly, though, we know it takes about seven incidents of domestic violence before a person does come and seek help, whether it's from police or other support agencies, um, for them to feel confident because there's a natural fear in many of these situations that they could become homeless, they could lose their children, they could lose their job. Um, so there's a lot of things that are at play in people's minds and the more that we can provide them with information that reassures them that there's lots of services across the state 
how the new government and the new government agencies to provide that level of support. I think then confidence goes up in people's minds. Can I ask then if we're moving on? Um, there's a national report on wastewater analysis that indicates that Adelaide's the ice capital of the nation. Is that a surprising um, outcome or were you aware that that was a very likelihood or and do you have the resources to be able to tackle it? A couple of things there. Um, this has been a consistent trend. Um, we have been well aware of the wastewater reports trajectory in terms of what it says about South Australia. We have been clear that um, the uh, methamphetamine and cannabis use in this state is a scourge. Uh, we put a lot of resources to it. It is a battleground, both nationally and internationally, for these products to come into the country or to be manufactured here or grown here. Uh, we put a lot of resources to it, and the joint approach that we have, as you know, we have a lot of seizures, we have a, a lot of success, but it just goes to show how big this problem is. Um, in terms of uh, resources, uh, we have dedicated resources, we have frontline resources to this problem. Um, but as the Commission has been quite, quite clear, we are, we are down in numbers, we are 83rd ahead, we are short of our 2018 target in terms of police numbers, so that does put stressors on police officers and the amount of capacity we have, but we still have a capacity to, to deal with the problem to a degree, but it is getting bigger. And I think there's also an indication that cannabis use was particularly high in regional South Australia are aware of that also? Yes, so we, we've seen the report, we, um, we, we got an early copy of it, we were aware of what was coming, um, but we're still not surprised by the results because we have a scourge that these drugs have in our community and the, the amount, the city snatcher they have and the addictive, the addictive quality of them and what it does to people, it ruins lives, it doesn't ruin just the individual, it ruins their family um, because everyone lives with and with the addiction and is affected by it. Can I ask also then, uh, about uh, Velo Road closures and understand starting tomorrow. What are the challenges for police and also their message to members of the public, particularly in the high risk locations? I think the, ch the challenges for everybody is that people get frustrated when you know, they get traffic congestion or you know their route to work or how their day has changed. We just say to people, you know, just be patient, um, take your time. You will get to your destination and it might be a couple of minutes longer, which in the scheme of things we're just looking at our lives. So, just take the time, be patient, um, get along with people. This is a great event for the state. It, it brings people in. It's great for our tourism industry. It's a, it creates a vibrance in the city. Um, we can all work together. We've done it before, so just be patient. And there's the issue, sorry, there's the issue of um, pedestrians, a particular issue in the, the lower speed zones, you know, around, particularly around East Adelaide, where they're likely to be higher than usual foot traffic. Yeah. And just people just need to be aware of their surroundings, take care. Um, look where you're going. Um, it's just the little things that people should be doing, but just be super aware that the conditions have changed. Can I ask then on another topic again, the fatal house fire overnight at Woodville Gardens? Yes, 72 year old victim. Um, is there anything you can, um, any update you can provide to us, and are you aware if the victim suffered any injuries that so were caused by the fire? I can tell you that at 4 05 early hours this morning, that a house fire was reported to MFS by a member of the public at Woodville Gardens. Both SACOL and MFS Fire, MFS fire Force investigators uh, were recalled and are examining the scene. The death is being treated as an unexplained death. The fire appears to be suspicious, but it's too early in the investigation to determine the actual cause. Um, the deceased male in the house has not yet been formally identified and we will release more information as the investigation unfolds. But, um, that is as much information as we prefer to release at this time. No arrests at this stage. No. What so sort of resources have you got working on a major crime? So our uh, Western District CRB, both District CRB are being assisted by major crime in the investigation. So both resources and obviously fire force investigators and forensics. And how long do you think police will be at that scene for? Well, it's always hard to determine. It depends how complex it is and what's required. So I can give an estimate on that time. Was the man living alone, do you know? I'm not aware of the personal circumstances of the deceased. Any other questions? Um, I don't know whether you're able to speak, so I believe there's been another arrest oh. involving Eclipse, uh, Eclipse and uh, it was involving an arson down at the gift shop, Kennington. Uh, Kennington, yes, I can talk to that. So a woman has been arrested after a business arson at Kennington last month. You might recall at about 4.30am on Tuesday the 15th of October, 
Police were called to a gift shop on the corner of Addison Road and Lynette Street um, after reports of a fire. The business is, was extensively damaged. Um, after an investigation by Western District CIB in conjunction with Operation Eclipse, a person has been arrested. Um, I understand it's a 24-year-old woman from Lindock and she's been charged with the arson. She'll appear in the Elizabeth Magistrates Court later today. Would that now be 16 arrests under Eclipse? It would be 16. That This would be the 16th, yes. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.